How you store your oxygen equipment is important so that it's ready to use in an emergency. Assembly and disassembly of the oxygen equipment is also important so you'll be able to clean the unit and be comfortable and confident in its use. Dan recommends the Dan oxygen unit be left assembled and depressurized inside its waterproof case. First, make sure the cylinder is turned off and the unit is depressurized. Remove the multifunction regulator from the cylinder valve and note the system by which the valve and regulator attach. If your system leaks, check the oxygen washer to be sure that it's free of debris and other scarring that might cause it to not seal properly. Note that the washer is different than a scuba system O-ring and that check valves on the multifunction regulator prevent oxygen from flowing out of the outlet ports when hoses are not attached. Disconnect the demand valve from the green hose. Gently rock the mask back and forth to remove. Unscrew the plastic mask adapter from the demand inhalator valve and remove the exhalation valve assembly. You should clean and disinfect the plastic mask adapter, the exhalation valve assembly, and the mask after each use. One method is to soak these parts in a mild bleach solution, 10% in water, for 10 minutes. Rinse with fresh water and allow to thoroughly dry. Other disinfecting agents are available. Once the parts are clean and dry, you should assemble your DAN oxygen unit and store it for another day. Attach the oxygen hose to demand inhalator valve and multifunction regulator so that it's finger tight. To avoid cross-threading the plastic mask adapter and valve, first screw the plastic adapter in a counterclockwise direction until you feel the adapter find the groove of the valve. Then turn in a clockwise direction. Place the oxygen washer on the regulator inlet and connect the regulator to the cylinder. Check to make sure the system is functioning by pressurizing it and listen for leaks. If there are no leaks, turn off the cylinder, depressurize the system, and store the unit. If there are leaks, examine each connection to assure proper assembly and tighten connections. If necessary, double-check the condition of the oxygen washer. If the oxygen unit has been used, refill your oxygen cylinder prior to your next dive outing. Providing oxygen first aid to injured divers is not difficult to learn, but there are some simple guidelines to follow. First, remember to be okay? safe. Avoid risking injury to yourself when helping another Sonny? diver. Are you okay? Sonny, are you okay? Second, assure that the you injured mind? diver I'm is breathing. Bring me first aid oxygen? If not, begin CPR. Third, Provide the highest concentration of oxygen possible. 100% inhaled oxygen via demand valve is recommended. Hey, Troy, Fourth, activate the emergency medical system in your area. Remember, injured divers need to be evaluated by a healthcare professional for possible referral to definitive treatment at a recompression facility. Lastly, if you're not sure what to do, call Dan's Diving Emergency Hotline for consultation and other assistance for diving injuries. Tony, are you okay? 
Tony, are you okay? Danny, I have an unresponsive diver. Can you please bring me oxygen and first aid and alert EMS? All right, Stephanie, here's the first aid kit. Oxygen set up for you. Before coming to the assistance of an injured diver, it's important to take a moment to remember to be safe. Safe is a reminder to okay? stop, take a moment to think, then act. Assess the scene before assisting another person. Is the scene safe? Find your Dan oxygen unit, first aid kit, and AED unit. You'll need to locate your personal protective barriers, such as gloves and oronasal resuscitation mask. Use exposure protection to avoid contact with blood and other bodily fluids. Your next step is to determine responsiveness in breathing. Assess responsiveness by tapping the injured diver on the shoulder and shouting, Are you okay? Tony, are you okay? If the injured diver does not respond, activate the emergency medical system and call for help. At the same time you are assessing responsiveness, you should notice if the diver is breathing normally. If the injured diver is not breathing normally, initiate CPR, beginning with 30 chest compressions, followed by two breaths. CPR is not generally taught as part of this course, although your instructor may offer it as an additional module. If an AED unit is available, deploy it. Discuss other training opportunities with your DAN instructor. Oh, good. Okay. It's a good dive. All right, here it is. Let me get it set up for you. Do I need this? If the diver is breathing normally, provide the highest concentration possible. Deploy the oxygen unit. All right, once I get it set up, I'm going to take one. Part. Open the cylinder valve with at least one full turn and check cylinder pressure. When activating the system, avoid looking at the pressure gauge. The demand inhalator valve is the first choice anytime there's a breathing injured diver. Be sure the system is not leaking and then take a breath from the demand inhalator valve. Exhale away from the mask to reduce the risk of disease transmission. Inform the injured diver that oxygen may help. State, this is oxygen and it may make you feel better. May I help you? If the injured diver is unresponsive, permission to help is assumed. Place the mask over the injured diver's mouth and nose and instruct the diver to breathe normally. Comfort and reassure the injured diver and listen for the demand valve to activate. Observe the mask fogging during breathing and watch the chest rise and fall. Positioning is also important when assisting an injured diver. If the diver is responsive, you may place them either in a position of comfort or in a recovery position on their side with their head supported. If the injured diver is unresponsive but is breathing normally, place her in the recovery position to minimize the risk of airway obstruction. If vomiting occurs, gravity will help keep the airway clear. Okay, well she just went unconscious on us. Once the diver is properly positioned, Activate your emergency assistance plan and ensure the diver gets evaluated at the nearest available medical facility. You may provide water or other non-carbonated, non-caffeinated, non-alcoholic beverages, if tolerated, to divers who are fully responsive while waiting for other assistance. Call Dan if you're not sure what to do or if further consultation and advice is needed. Remember. At no time should oxygen first aid be used in lieu of evaluation and definitive care by a trained medical professional. Just it's really hard. It's, it's not, it doesn't seem to be working right. Just if the breathing injured diver can't activate or tolerate the demand inhalator valve, you should use the non-rebreather mask. Locate the non-rebreather mask in the DAN oxygen unit and remove it from the bag. Stretch the oxygen tubing to avoid kinks and attach it to the barbed constant flow outlet on the multifunction regulator. 
set the constant flow control to 10 to 15 liters per minute. Place the mask on the injured diver's face and adjust the elastic band around the head to hold the mask in place. Squeeze the metal clip over the nose and check to make sure there are no leaks around the sides of the mask. If there are leaks, you may need to gently hold the mask in place to improve the seal. Instruct the diver to breathe normally and watch for signs of breathing. Assure that the reservoir bag remains inflated. If not, increase the constant flow rate to 15, 20, or 25 liters per minute as appropriate. If the injured diver continues to completely deflate the reservoir bag, encourage them to switch over to the demand inhalator valve. Against your face and relax. Breathe. Place the injured diver in the proper position and comfort them. Activate your emergency action plan and call Dan. Although rare, situations involving a non-breathing diver can occur. In order to increase the chance of a successful outcome, provide supplemental oxygen during your resuscitation efforts as part of CPR using a bag valve mask or a flow-restricted oxygen-powered ventilator like the MTV. Never delay priority care while waiting for a BVM or preparing to use it. Perform CPR using a resuscitation mask while another provider sets up the BVM. To prepare a BVM, use connecting tubing to attach an oxygen delivery system capable of delivering a high flow rate of oxygen. Set the flow rate controller on the regulator to 15 liters per minute. Listen for the flow of oxygen into the device. Allow the oxygen reservoir to completely fill. When the device is ready, position yourself directly above the patient's head. Your partner should be positioned next to the patient's side. Place the mask flat on the patient's face, laying the top of the mask over the bridge of the patient's nose. Lay your thumbs along the sides of the mask. Hook your index fingers underneath the angles of the jawbone just below the patient's ears. To establish an airway, lift and tilt the patient's head. Then use your fingers to lift the patient's jaw up against the mask. Use counter pressure with your thumbs to help seal the mask to the patient's face. To ventilate, your partner should use two hands to squeeze the bag enough to create a visible rise of the chest. This only requires about one-third of the bag volume. Each ventilation should be smooth and last about one second. Provide continuous cycles of 30 compressions and two ventilations. Always allow for full exhalation of the first ventilation before providing the second one. If a patient's chest does not rise when ventilated with a BVM, first reposition his head and attempt another ventilation. There it goes. If unsuccessful, check for any obstructions such as fluids or solids in the mouth. Remember, the most common obstruction is the patient's own tongue. Look and listen for a poor seal between the mask and the patient's face. Reposition your hands and fingers as necessary. If you cannot effectively provide ventilations using a BVM, consider performing mouth-to-mask ventilations using a resuscitation mask as an alternative. There we go. Because it can be difficult to use a BVM, frequent training and practice are essential to maintain proficiency. When used correctly, a BVM can provide effective, life-sustaining ventilations with a high concentration of oxygen for a patient who is not breathing or is breathing inadequately on his own. Never delay care while waiting for a manually triggered ventilator or preparing to use it. Perform CPR using a resuscitation mask while another provider sets up the MTV. Depress the button on the device to ensure oxygen is flowing. 
Verify the safety mechanism is functioning by sealing the device against your hand and depressing the button. The oxygen flow should stop and the gas should be released. Position yourself near the patient's head. Place the mask over the patient's face. Lift and hold the jaw into the mask as you open the airway. Depress the button on the device, ventilating the patient with 100% oxygen until the chest rises. Allow complete exhalation. Each ventilation should last about one second and create a visible rise and fall of the chest. Monitor the patient's skin color, especially around the lips and mouth, for effectiveness. When performing CPR, provide continuous cycles of 30 compressions and two ventilations. Allow for full exhalation of the first ventilation before providing the second one. The most common problem with using this device is failure to create an adequate seal of the mask on the patient's face. Make sure you lift the jaw into the mask and seal the mask with firm, even pressure. If you are unable to create an effective seal, consider using another ventilation device. If the chest does not rise, reposition the airway, ensure a good seal on the mask and attempt another ventilation. Still if the chest the still doesn't rise, check for airway obstruction. I don't see anything blocking. Ensure the airway is open and allow the diver to exhale fully. This minimizes the risk of both lung overpressurization and gas delivery to the stomach, which can cause vomiting. Delivering oxygen does not change CPR. You still need to alternate 30 compressions with two rescue breaths. Stephanie, I think he may be breathing on his own. Hold on, let me. Yeah, he started breathing again. Let's get him in the recovery position. If the injured diver spontaneously begins breathing, assess the airway and breathing and place the injured diver in the recovery position. Then switch over to the non-rebreather mask or the demand inhalator valve. You can also use the MTV-100 as a demand valve. Another situation you may encounter is providing oxygen first aid to two injured divers. Your first course of action is to determine which diver has the most serious warning signs and provide the highest concentration of oxygen possible. If the most seriously injured diver is breathing, you'll use the demand inhalator valve. If not, use the oronasal resuscitation mask with supplemental oxygen. On the second injured diver, deploy the non-rebreather mask. Remember to provide the highest concentration of oxygen to the diver with the most serious condition. Providing oxygen to an injured diver will cause no further harm, may improve or eliminate problems, and may reduce the amount and severity of problems after hyperbaric treatment. Hopefully, you'll never need to use oxygen, but if you do, you should now understand how important it is to recognize the symptoms of decompression illness and respond with oxygen first aid. As a DAN oxygen provider, take a moment and review the scenario. Determine your best course of action and remember that your best rescue efforts based on your training and experience is all that's expected.